On the list of things that cloud deployments offer to us that would be prohibitively expensive or difficult to set up for ourselves, load balancing has got to be near the top of that list. Uh, load balancing allows us to distribute traffic, at least in Google, from all over the world into specific instances of our application. And it's worth looking at how we can utilize load balancing to support our applications, to make our applications highly available and highly performant. And those are really the two features of load balancing that make it beneficial to us as developers and deployers. Load balancing, if you're unfamiliar with the term, basically allows you to distribute user traffic across multiple instances of your application. So you can imagine if you've got a website that's getting hit, um, I don't know, you know, 500 times a second. Well, one computer, one processor running one copy of that website may not be able to keep up with that traffic. So you run two copies of that website on two different computers and those 500 instances, those 500 requests every second, get split or divided across those two different instances. This gives you a couple of benefits. Like I said, there's performance by dividing the workload, right? Two instances can run in parallel at twice the speed of one instance. Hell, four instances can run, you know, four times the speed. So the more instances that you have, the more performance you're going to get. But you also get performance by geolocating the workload. And what I mean by that is distributing the workload to instances that are geographically close to the person making the request. So consider an application that is distributed or used by people all over the world. Well, if you can load balance your users in Europe to servers that are in Europe and your users in the United States to users that are in the United States, then those users themselves are going to see better performance, better response times out of that application. Again, this is something you could set up yourself, but it may well be too expensive to actually build your own data center in multiple places across the globe. Google already has these data centers. We simply need to spin up these services in the right regions and in the right zones, and that allows us to take advantage of these features. Now, the other thing that load balancing does for us is not just performance, but availability, high availability by offering easy failover systems. In a load balancing scenario, typically, if you have you know, your traffic being distributed to multiple different instances of your application, and one of those instances goes down, well, your users aren't going to notice. All of the remaining traffic will get redirected to the instances that are still up and running. And so you don't have any interruption in service, even though you lost an instance. Maybe a data center went down, maybe a, maybe a computer crashed. Whatever the case is, you have high availability. Now, it's important to note that to take advantage of this, your applications do have to be built. They'd have to be designed to run in this fashion. So if you are building an application, it has to know that it might have multiple copies of it running and it has to be prepared to run in parallel and prepared to pick up when, um, when things happen, when instances become unavailable. So building applications this way, it's a pretty smart and intelligent way to design your applications. If you wanna take advantage of this stuff, you need to be able to do that. But it's just worth noting that not just every application is going to out of the box be available or take advantage of load balancing scenarios. Now, Google's load balancer itself is available both globally and regionally. So globally, it is, uh, like I mentioned before, you can have users in different parts of the world being distributed to different data centers that are physically, geographically close to them. But also regionally, I put it in quotes there because regions are a Google thing. You have Google regions, which is how they describe their data centers in different parts of the world. And you can have load balance traffic within just those regions. Load balancing is also available for both internal and external traffic. So external traffic is traffic that's coming from the public, from the World Wide Web. That's users that are on the public internet accessing your service. Internal traffic is traffic that is just inside of Google's cloud. So maybe from a front end service to a back end service that are both running on Google Compute Engine or one's running on Google App Engine, the front end and the back end is running on maybe Google Kubernetes Engine. You can balance the traffic between those services as well. So when we talk about global load balancing, we're referring to all the different scenarios or centers around the globe that Google has data centers in. You can have your users in one part of the world, say your users here in the US get distributed onto one and your users over here in Asia get distributed onto another, right? So your users are accessing copies of your application that are geographically or physically close to where they are. And Google does have data centers all over the world. This graphic does not depict them all. It's constantly changing because they're constantly building new data centers. But we'll look in a moment at the, um, the region and data center chart that's at, available at Google's documentation so you can get a sense for how many different data centers there are. So setting up global load balancing when you have users that are all over the world and you need to take advantage of it, you can do that. Regional load balancing is load balancing that happens inside of a specific 
zone or inside of a specific region. So for instance, if you have traffic inside of US East 4 listed right here, there's three different zones there that you can distribute traffic to. So your traffic can be split up across all these three zones. This gives you resiliency inside of that region. So if one of those zones goes down, sometimes zones do have outages, you still have traffic running in these other zones, which are typically in physically separate data centers inside of the same general geographic region. It's very unlikely that an entire region goes down, whereas even though it's still unlikely a zone goes down, it does happen more often. So by load balancing uh, within a given region, you can ensure that you get the maximum uptime for your services that you could possibly use. Now, lastly, the load balancing options inside of Google come in a number of different flavors. They can be a little bit confusing. I'm going to start to talk about them here. We'll get a high level overview of what features are available for the different types of load balancing that you might do. Uh, but when it comes to the actual implementation of these load balancers, the devil's in the details, of course. And when we go through later in this series of videos, when we talk about actually implementing load balancers, we'll get to see a little bit more in depth how these load balancers work. But to begin with, we have uh, HTTP load balancing or HTTPS load balancing if you're running over TLS. This is exactly what it sounds like. This is for HTTP web traffic, people opening up a web browser, communicating over a, an HTTP endpoint for RESTful services. This is available for both internal and external traffic. And your endpoint, your terminal point can be IPv4 or IPv6. Your termination, by the way, is the actual endpoint that your users or that your service presents or communicates with. So a user out here in the world that's hitting your load balancer will hit a IP address right here. And that IP address will distribute traffic out to the various services that actually get balanced across. So from the user's perspective, there's only one single terminus, one single termination IP, but that IP traffic then gets distributed across multiple instances. You can also have TCP or SSL proxy load balancing, which is very, very similar, but for more generic TCP traffic or SSL traffic. This is TCP traffic that is not HTTP, but still needs to communicate over TCP networks. This is only available for external traffic. They do not have this available for internal traffic. This is only external traffic. And same thing, you can use IPv4 or IPv6 termination. Now, both of these are what we call a proxy service, and that means that the return is the termination IP address. I'm going to talk in a moment about how the uh, final configuration has direct server return, but these do not. Both HTTP and the proxy load balancers have a termination address return, so when the communication comes back to the user, when the response comes back from the request, they are going to see that terminal IP address that they communicated with originally. That one single IP address that's on the front of the load balancer is the IP address that the communication is coming back from. And that is again opposed to what's called the network load balancer, which is for all other network traffic. It is available both internally and externally, IPv4 or IPv6, although IPv6 is only for external traffic. There is no internal IPv6 traffic on the network load balancer. And importantly, the network load balancer is direct return. This means that as the traffic comes in to one single IP address here, the traffic gets split up across multiple different instances. The return traffic skips the load balancer on its return. It goes around it and goes directly back to the user or to the invoking process. So whichever instance got the actual traffic assigned to it, that's the instance is communicating back to the user, whereas on our HTTPS or SSL uh, proxy, the traffic goes back through the load balancer and presents itself with that external single point facing IP address. So that is a little bit about the load balancing scenarios in Google's network. This is, of course, a big topic. There's a lot that we can do and a lot of ways that you can leverage load balancers to help improve the performance of your applications and improve the availability of your applications. Again, you need to know a lot about the different ways that you can configure these services, like I talked about here on this slide, as well as how to design and architect your application to take advantage of high availability load balancing. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.